to the next section I'd like to talk about, which is your personal protocol. Now, we, we've kind of talked about, so you take rapamycin once every two weeks and the, and the senolytics once every two weeks. And the, the, uh, the glycine and the cysteine, is that every day? How, how, yeah. The glycine and cysteine, I try to take every day. Uh, and uh, the and my, but my usual, my, pro, my protocol used to be taking the, the uh, rapamycin. Uh, first, I was taking three or four years, like six milligrams once a week. But then I moved up to 10 milligrams because some of my patients were doing that on their own. And they had like a good response. So I moved up to that. But then in the sort of the last six weeks, I have like following black and suggestion. I've been doing 20 milligrams of rapamycin one week and the uh, pisotinum, two tablets, 100 milligrams, two days in a row, uh, the next week. So, so every other week, I do one or the other of those two. Right. For my patients, I mostly have everybody just on, like I haven't done that, I just have the once a week, because once a week is fine if you're on a low dose, but I don't think it's good to take, I, I was concerned that the rapamycin would interact with the synolytics, mm. and, that, and that the synolytics, you're trying to like kill the cells. Rapamycin is good for increasing autophagy, to helping cells stay alive. <laughs> I would think the rapamycin might help the synolytic cells stay alive. So I didn't want to be taking the rapamycin the same time I was saying this, I was trying to kill the senescent cells. Right. So do you take any other supplements? Like, do you take NAD no, boosters or no, anything? No, nothing, no. nothing else. I know, I only take the rapamycin, the desoxidin. Uh, I take quercetin as a, for the desoxidin because that's the program. and I just added the NAC and the glycine based on that sort of like paper from Baylor Medical School. Right. And so what what does your diet look like? Or, yeah, can I ask that? Yeah. Well, I generally try to sort of like stick to uh, a low methionine diet, which is like generally try to stick to a vegan diet type of diet Although I frequently sort of like, like, the problem is I have like another person here who likes to eat hamburger. <laughs> that's, that's the dog. So the dog has <laughs> fried hamburger. So frankly, I'll, I'll eat the dog's food. But myself, when I don't break down and eat the dog's food, I just stick to the, the vegan type of diet because I want to be on a low methionine diet. Right. Okay, interesting. But okay. I mentioned, uh, one thing I should mention is interesting is that rapamycin is extraordinary for like weight loss because in that prior to taking rapamycin, I had like a lifelong battle for like 40 years, you know, when I was older, trying to maintain my weight in like what is 175 and not be like 190. You know, I try hmm. to keep it like, that was always like a, a daily struggle or like continuous struggle. Well, as soon as I was taking rapamycin, I was first I was able to like go down to 150 pounds, which just like seemed like absolutely impossible for like my entire adult life. I didn't weigh that since I was 13 years old. Uh, and not only that, but the most amazing thing, I didn't have any tendency to cycle. I was just being on rapamycin. It didn't seem no like it seemed like I had a tendency to put on weight. I was just like, like because of what I was doing, I did not feel that like the daily struggle that my body was trying to put on extra weight. It's like, it, it was like, I like was like, suddenly I was a different person. I was that like, like you look like real thin. I was that kind of like thin person who like, you know, they say, oh, all right, you know, I just eat whatever I want, I'll put on any weight. You know, that, that, that kind of a person. I suddenly be like, like much more like that kind of person. Although <clears throat> prior to taking rapamycin, I was the kind of person that was struggling every day to keep your weight from going up. Interesting. Yeah. So 
so you say that, so you take rapamycin and you have a lomothionine diet. Uh, do you need to do both? I mean, it sounds like they would have like overlap, overlapping yeah, pathways. I don't think you need to do both. I think just being on rapamycin is sufficient. But, uh, but I just like to be, uh, uh, be on a better like diet. Also, I like to avoid uh, what uh, Helen Basarical advanced glycation end products. Mm. Uh, and uh, those are sort of like things that are made when you're like cooking uh, proteins like meat at a high temperature. And then you, she said that you're making lots of new chemicals. These new chemicals are very reactive. And uh, I mean, she said that a typical Western diet was 20,000 AGEs a day and, and a Mediterranean diet was 7,000. That was the difference of why a Mediterranean diet was way healthier. Basically, uh, as an example of raw meat, three ounces of raw meat would be 700 AGs, three ounces of grilled meat would be 7,000. So these new chemicals, which she's calling advanced glycation end products, which are like a whole, a, a vast collection of high reactive chemicals, were being reduced when you're doing cooking and you're having which is a very, cooking is a very complex chemical reaction when you're cooking meats. Because mm -hmm. in, in cooking meats, you have proteins, fats, and sugars all in the meat. And you're cooking at a high temperature, they can all interact together and form all sorts of new chemicals. Right, yes. So, right, right, right. But they're not in <clears throat> uh, vegetables. <clears throat> so if you're eating like a mostly like vegetable diet, like uh, like beans and stuff like that, they're not, you can't produce them because they don't have the, all the different things to make them. And you don't, also you don't cook them in a high. So you just can't make them because you don't have all the things together to make them. It's only grilling meat products that you make these things. But everybody, the advanced glycation, everyone is very familiar with them because mm. it's, what, it's, it's what makes meat smell good, taste good. Yes, I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.